Hey guys, how's it going? Right, we're back for part two. Change your clothes. Um, <laughs> obviously doing this another night. So, first question we've got is from a really great up and coming YouTuber called Cybersnake7, otherwise known as Jay. Really nice bloke. Um, not been on here too long, but he's making really great videos. He's got a quality collection. And he definitely has the right attitude. Really, really top bloke. Very down to earth. So thank you for the questions, Jay. And the first question is, what is your favourite SNES game? Um, I did answer that earlier, it is Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Um, yeah, I think when I've played a lot more SNES games and I've experienced games that I've never played before, that may change over time because there are some really great games that I've picked up already that I've not played before and this is my first experience of them and I'm really enjoying them. So I think, yeah, as time goes on, I will find games that I enjoy more. But Street Fighter 2 Turbo is just a game that, for some reason, has just got its hooks in me and I've always come back to it over the years. Uh, I just can't get enough of Street Fighter 2 in any form. It's just brilliant, but Turbo is the best. Question number two. Worst game you have ever, ever bought? Ooh. Oh, that's a hard one. There's a few games I've bought that have been like, oh my god. Especially Last Generation on the Xbox and the PS2. I mean, yeah, there's some pretty shitty games out there. Um, I'm trying to think of something that might come off the top of my head. To be fair, even on this generation, I've bought games and been like, oh my god. Um... Singularity, I mean, that stands out. That started off as really good, and then it got to a point where the game just became incredibly frustrating. I just couldn't do any. It was really dumb. And a lot of games are like that this generation, I've found. The reason I've not liked them is because they're really broken in their design, and they don't, they're trying to beat you over the head with a difficulty level instead of making the game fun. And you have camera issues like Enslaved, which I really, really wanted to enjoy that game because I loved the demo, but my God, did the camera piss me off. Loads of people have said on here that they didn't have a problem, they loved the game, but I just found it incredibly difficult to play and I got really, really angry and just got fed up and just thought, no, can't play it any longer. <laughs> but yeah, it's just difficult. I mean, there's probably a long list, actually, Jay, to be quite honest, because when it comes to last generation, as I say, the last gen and this gen, there's quite a few that I've bought have been a bit of crap. Um, so it's kind of difficult to like, narrow it down to one game, really. Um, question three. What game are you after that you can't get your hands on? All the best, Jay. Well, that is actually quite an interesting question because there's a few that I've been trying to get my hands on, especially Super Nintendo related. But one of the games I've been trying to get for bloody ages, and for some reason, it's really weird because I thought the game would be a really common game. But for some reason, trying to get it from America, it seems to be really difficult. You do see box copies on there on American eBay, but they're always in crap condition. And there's usually only literally a handful, like maybe three or four at a time, if you're lucky boxed. I don't know why it's, it's become it's so difficult to come by. I would have thought it would be super common, but it's very strange. I can't see it being a rare game at all. But as it happens, over the weekend, Crash Test Gaming found a copy for me, and I don't think he even knew I was looking for that game. He just happened to send me an email because the game was cheap, and he said, "Oh, look, this is on eBay." So I went and purchased it, and I will be showing that in a in a pickup video, obviously, when it arrives. But yeah, that was a real, real lucky find. Um, I mean, it's not the most amazing game in the world, but it is a good game. I just hope the Super Nintendo version is good. Um, I know the Mega Drive version is excellent, so I'm hoping the SNES version matches up always better. So it'd be interesting to see what it comes. So there you go. So yeah, thank you, Jay. I really appreciate the questions, mate. And you know, anyone who's never seen Cyber Snakes, Cyber Snakes, I can't even say that, Cyber Snakes 7, I really can't say it. If you've not seen Cyber Snakes 7, go and check out his channel, because he's a really top bloke and definitely worth watching. Next one we have is a set of questions from Horatio Van Basten and he asks, question number one, what is my favourite Thundercat, Chitara, <laughs> for obvious reasons because she's hot, it's a bit wrong in a way but she is, um, other than that maybe Panthro, I think that's how you say his name, or, or probably Lino, I mean it's yeah, pretty obvious but he's just a dude isn't he, um, yeah I'm just trying to think, um, it's been so long since I watched Thundercats, I'm trying to remember all the characters. Yeah, those are the main ones. I mean, they're pretty obvious, I suppose. Um, Snarf, that's what I was trying to think what that little dude was called. Yeah, Snarf. Snarf was cool. I'm sure that's right. <laughs> Favourite arcade game? Final Fight. Without a doubt. Love Final Fight. Never got bored of it. Favourite genre, and I just absolutely caned it as a kid. And Yeah, that well, it's, it's probably joint first, actually. Final Fight, Operation Wolf. Um, they're just absolute classic arcade games. They're just brilliant. <laughs> now this is an interesting question, this is quite funny. Question number three, subtitles or dubbing? You missed the third option, which is none of the above. 
And it's really funny because I know that Owen, Lebossi 77, will find that question quite funny because he knows where I stand on subtitles and dubbing and foreign films in general. Um, yeah, I'm straight Hollywood. I'm very commercial. I, I don't do subtitles. I just can't watch subtitles. They drive me mental. I, can't, I just find it absolutely... A, I find it impossible to keep up with what the dialogue says on the screen and to watch the action on the screen. And B, I find it, that it, for me personally, I can't get an emotional connection with the characters when I'm trying to read this, the dialogue and watch the film. I just find it impossible to connect with the characters and I just, I can't stand the subtitles, they're doing my head in. Uh, I definitely don't like art house and all that poncy shit. I like, I like proper films and I'm going to get absolutely stored. I know Le Boss is going to kill me for saying proper films, but <laughs> I like a good action movie. I'm, I'm an 80s kid, you know, I like action movies like Arnold and Sly and Van Damme to a little bit. Um, I like old Seagal movies, not, the, not all the stuff he's been doing for the last couple of years, but all the original Seagal movies when he was really good. Uh, but I do like, you know, I like romantic comedies, I like dramas, I like thrillers, I like not so much horror films in terms of slasher films, I like psychological horror films like the original Saw, not the crappy sequels, the first one, great film. And I also, I don't know, I just, I'll watch anything, I mean, Christ, I never thought like musicals. Never thought like musicals, not my kind of thing at all. And I only ever watched Sound of Music, it was okay, I enjoyed it. But a few years back, I watched Hairspray, my mum was watching it. <laughs> she really was, I'm not just saying that to like make it sound better, but <laughs> my mum got it for Christmas and basically she wanted to watch it and my dad wouldn't watch it with her, so I said, Oh, I'll watch it with you. And I watched Hairspray and I absolutely loved it, I thought it was a brilliant film. And John Travolta and, um... oh, what's his name? Oh Jesus Christ! Oh, I can't think of the bloke's name. That Christopher Walken, one of the greatest actors ever. To see them two doing that was just absolutely fantastic. And a couple of nights ago, I watched The Rock of Ages with Tom Cruise, and surprised at how that movie because a the music was brilliant anyway, but b the film was actually really good. And the biggest surprise was Russell Brand can actually act, sort of. Uh, but he was actually quite credible and quite funny in the film. Didn't expect that. But yeah, and dubbing, pff, nah. My mate is my best mate is into all that, he's into all like the martial arts films so he likes the dubbing and stuff, but I think he also likes to have the real subtitles. It just doesn't interest me in the slightest. Sorry, this. <laughs> I, I can just imagine my own thinking right, watching this. The boss is just gonna be like <sighs> gonna be shaking his head in disappointment. <laughs> right, okay, so next questions are from my good friend Mario Mario and Sonic nineteen eighty six, Josh over in Australia. You like Josh? And he sent me a couple of questions, and the first question is, will you consider getting another PS2 into your collection and keeping it this time for the great exclusive games that can be played for the system? I don't know if you, if you posted that question before seeing my pickup video, Josh, but uh, yeah, I've got another PS2. So, <laughs> so that's kind of answer that question. Yes, I have got one. And I would like to get an Aqua Blue one again because I really like the Aqua Blue PlayStation. I won't be getting a Slim, though. No. I hate the PlayStation 2 Slim. I think it looks crap. It looks really shit. It's just too thin and too small, and it just looks cheesy and cheap. Um, but yeah, I do like the chunky PS2, so yeah, I'm going to keep it this time, I promise. Hopefully. Maybe. <laughs> no, I definitely will. <laughs> question number two. Question dear to my heart at the moment. The Wii U. Uh, it says, the Wii U is not far away from release. I want to ask you, will you consider playing any multiplayer games with friends online on the system? Yeah, I will actually. As, you, as most people will know who know me on YouTube and who have watched me for a while, and, you know, my friends on YouTube will know I don't do multiplayer gaming. I've got no interest in online gaming at all. I tried it when it first started. I loved it on the original Xbox with a bit of Halo 2. You know, great fun. Xbox 360 came into Call of Duty 2. Played a lot of Gears of War co-op, which I absolutely adored. Uh, for me personally, if I'm going to play online, co-op is the way to go. I, I find Deathmatch quite boring. With friends, it's great. It can be a right laugh because you don't take it seriously and you have fun with it. But when you play with randoms, it's just shit. I don't. I just find it really incredibly annoying. But I've got to be honest. After seeing E3 when they showed the Wii U and the Miiverse and the whole interaction thing and being able to like comment back and forth, Twitter stuff, which I can't believe I'm actually saying that because I hate Twitter and Facebook and all that shit. But I just like the idea of being able to communicate with my friends on my friends list. I've been able to like if I get stuck, I can say, oh, you know, does anyone know how to do this bit or give me some advice and you can help each other out. And, yeah, I, I, I think I like the way Nintendo's going about it, so I think I'm going to give it a try when I get it. Assuming, of course, their online strategy is going to be free and not paid for, because they haven't mentioned anything about that yet. 
I can't see Nintendo charging. I would think it would be free. If anyone knows, let me know. I would assume it's going to be free. Hopefully they'll go the Sony route. But it, it, mind you, if they charge, I don't see Nintendo charging like 40 quid in that lot. Microsoft do. But we'll wait and say, but yeah, what the hell? I mean, to be quite honest, I might just even, even if it's subscription based, I might buy a year subscription, give it a try, see what I think. Because if I can play with all you guys on YouTube, it's a lot better. A lot better than playing with random people. So the short answer is, yeah, I will give it a try. <laughs> Question number three from Josh. Do you have any favourite cartoons from the 80s and 90s? Oh, mate, tons. Um, He-Man, She-Ra, Mask was one of my favourite. I love that. Centurions, I believe it was called, where you got the guy in the green suit with the moustache. And I believe there was a yellow one. I'm not sure if the other guy was red. I'm not sure. I know there was green and yellow anyway, for definite. And the guy in the green wore the moustache. And they basically, uh, was it Power Extreme or something like that? And they're getting the suits go poof, onto them. That was a bloody brilliant show. As I say, Mask, one of my favourites. Love that show to bits. Thundercats, as I mentioned earlier. Quality, absolute classic. 90s cartoons. Honestly, I don't remember any 90s cartoons. I don't think... I think because I hit my teenage years in the 90s, cartoons weren't relevant. It was more about films and music and gaming. Um, yeah, it was more the 80s, really, when I was watching cartoons. And it was like um, The Musketeers with Dog Tanyan and all that kind of stuff when I was growing up. The 80s were great, man. They some really great cartoons. And, yeah, they just don't make them like that. All that Pokemon shit. I mean, Jesus Christ, that's not a cartoon. It's a joke. <laughs> I've just insulted all the Pokemon fans, but I'm sorry. It just... For someone, for me personally, my age group, no, that, it ain't a proper cartoon. When you compare like He-Man, and you know, He-Man, Mask, Centurions, Dog Tanyan, the, the, um, and the Musketeers, and I'm trying to think of some of the other cartoons I watched as a kid, Thundercats, as I say. Um, yeah, there, there's quite a few when I was a kid growing up, because my brain just goes blank when I try to think of them, but those were the main ones I used to watch. I love the 80s cartoons. Um, right, okay. Uh, question number four. You're someone that does, uh, does like music, I am indeed, and is there, are there any genres of music you don't like? There are only a couple. Um, one is drum and bass, I absolutely hate it, I cannot stand it. When they had, I don't know if they had, I'm assuming they've got a drum and bass in Australia, is that the kind of music you, you're a DJ, you Josh, I'm pretty sure you DJ. I don't know if that's the kind of stuff you do, but yeah, I don't, I don't do drum and bass, it just, I don't get it at all. When they had commercial jungle, I could tolerate that, it was okay. Some of the tunes were really good, but the underground drum and bass stuff just goes right over my head, I don't like it at all. Uh, likewise, I absolutely hate IB for dance music, cl uh, club music, I just can't stand it. Which is weird, because I like happy hardcore, as it used to be called, or whatever the hell they're calling it, but I love hardcore, which is quite basically like IB for dance music on crack. It's just completely over the top, so it makes no sense to me as to why I don't like the IB for dance commercial crap. But I love the hardcore shims. I never understood that at all. Um, is there anything else I don't like? I think that's pretty much, pretty much the only genres I don't like. I mean, anything else, I'm willing to give it a try and see what I think of it. I'm not really, you know, I don't really shut myself off to music. Even with drum and bass and the, the commercial dance, I have listened to it and given it a try at least. I won't just say, oh, that's crap and not listen to it. I will, you know, have a listen and see if I can get into it. But if I can't, I can't. Yeah. So there you go. So those were the questions from Mario and Sonic 1986, another awesome YouTuber, uh, top bloke. And the next questions are from another top bloke called Retro Sofa, really great YouTuber. Now his first question is, do you prefer a smaller collection or a bigger one? Good question, mate. Um, I would probably say a smaller collection in terms of space saving. If I had the room, I would go for like a peak door and just have a mental collection because why the hell not? But then. It is difficult because you have to also think about quantity or quality, and it's quite easy to get quantity. Anyone can do that. Um, I think it's more difficult to get a, a collection of quality titles, titles that no matter what everybody else thinks, whether they agree with you or not, they're games that mean something to you, that you enjoy. And obviously, you know, with a lot of systems, because growing up you don't have the money to buy all of the games to get released or a big selection of the games to get released, when you get older and the games are cheaper and you have the money, you're obviously going to buy games that you've never played and give them a try. And there's nothing wrong with that because if you don't like them, you can just get rid of them and sell them on. And that's a good thing. And then just keep the ones that you really enjoy. But, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. I mean, I think most people who've had the money would like to have a massive collection. Um, and then again, what, what do you determine as a massive collection? I suppose thousands of games, maybe. I mean, some people would crash, you know, if you've got, like, I've got over 200 games just for the Xbox alone. Some people would say that's a massive collection, but it's not really. 
But I mean, if you're not a collector, you would probably think that's a lot of games. But yeah, I think quantity over qu uh, quantity, quality over quantity is probably the way to go uh, long term. Yeah, definitely. Question number two: Would you like to see another World War Two first-person shooter, and if so, from what series? Absolutely. I've like I've been thinking about it recently. Actually, yeah, we're missing that. I know it got saturated the market, and there was a lot of like, oh god, not another first-person shooter set in World War Two. We need something modern and fresh, and we got that. And honestly, I prefer World War Two. I really enjoy the environment. As wrong as that might sound, there is something really cool about shooting Nazis. It never gets old, no matter what tales you tell. And there are plenty of st untold stories that need to be told about World War Two that could be told fantastically with the technology we have these days. Whether it be from a series, I don't know. I mean, if they come back another Call of Duty World War Two and the same level of quality as Call of Duty Two, then yeah, that'd be great. But I think Medal of Honor did a better job of the World War Two games than Call of Duty ever did. Um, what would be better, really, if, if a, a company would come up with a completely brand new, fresh take on the World War Two genre? Um, that'd be really cool. And uh, just you know, someone who's never done a World War Two first-person shooter just comes out and completely changes the game. Because I love, I just don't get bored of it. I, they can reskin it all they want, but it never gets boring. I love shooting Nazis. It's great. And um, especially like when they have World War Two games set in France, because you get that real cool atmosphere, and especially if you've got a good score to go with it as well. You play the original Medal of Honor, and when you're going through the woods, and you can hear the sound effects of the dogs and the Germans talking, and it's just a really great atmosphere. And I, I, I love those games. Yeah, definitely, we definitely need more World War Two games, even non-first-person shooters as well. When you play a game like Saboteur, that game really did nail it. That was quality. Now, oh, that's an interesting question. His third question is, what do you think of the state of British television uh, these days with all the reality TV crap? Honestly, mate, I think most, reality, most British TV is shite. I've said it before and I do think it's crap. We're seriously losing the plot over here. There's too much reality crap on TV. There's just too much rubbish. There's, there's not enough investment in drama, but there is starting to become some now. They're starting to put more in. The government's starting to put more into the dramas, which is good. And the BBC is starting to pump out some really great shows of late. Um, the only problem is I find in this country is that when we have dramas, they're always like six or seven episodes, maybe ten episodes like with spooks. And that's all you get, or you might get like a one-off, and it's like an hour and a half. We never get proper, I want to see proper dramas like the Americans have, where you get like a 23 episode season, or series as we would call it over here. I would love to see that. I just don't see, I don't know if you see the, the, the cost involved and... The industry in England isn't big enough to be able to support that. I really can't see it myself. Maybe it should be, but I mean, I'm sure we could afford to if we really wanted to and invested in it. But we have had some really good shows on the BBC lately, as I say. Even ITV, who traditionally for me have never been a very good channel for drama because they usually are quite depressing dramas or they're, they're like up north depressing, you know, people's real lives or they're like setting period dramas like Downton Abbey. But they have occasionally had good shows on the um, like DCI Banks is one I really enjoy on the ITV. And it's not going to be for everyone, but it's a really great cop show. And um, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's back on Wednesday as well, um, tomorrow. So that probably doesn't matter because this video won't be uploaded by then. But it's on Wednesday nights and it's a really great show. I think on about the third series now, it's excellent. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, I just think British TV, British TV is kick up the arse. Especially when you've got like, all the satellite TV now, you've got all these channels, and the, you can just literally skip, 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 and not find a damn thing to watch. And usually, if you do find something to watch, it's an American TV show that's been imported. <laughs> it's really bad state of affairs. It's like, I think British TV, we have all these channels, and 90% of them are shite, and we can just get rid of them. We need a gaming channel. We need a proper gaming channel. I mean, something that's serious and mature, and takes, the, 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 um, takes gaming seriously. You know, it can still be light-hearted, but whenever they seem to do gaming shows and that, they seem to try and hark back to what was good in the 80s and 90s with Game Ma Games Master and Games World. And that doesn't work for the modern gaming. It's not the same times. It's not the same kind of gaming experiences. And, you know, it doesn't work when you try and do that. It becomes across as cheesy and like they're taking the piss out of gamers, I find. And I really don't like these shows that you see on the odd channel now. And again, I think they're really cheesy, really crap. They've usually got crap presenters who don't know what they're talking about or... If they do have a presenter who knows what they're talking about, they do really crappy um, voiceovers, and it's just it's just boring and lame. 
Um, I want to see a proper, you know, proper week weekly show, or at least just have a channel where they cover modern gaming. They have retro gaming cover. They just cover everything. They cover what's happening in in, in the industry. They go to the events like E3 and Tokyo Game Show. Um, you know, just just make an effort, man. That's all I'm asking. And yeah, I think British TV needs a complete reboot. We need to, Channel Four needs to go because Channel Four is the biggest conflict for reality TV. They make a reality TV show about anything, and even when you think they can't make any more, they come up with a new subject that you just think, how the hell did you even come up with that idea? It's shocking. I think British TV is appalling. Um, it's a real letdown. But the BBC are making a real effort to bring dramas back, and they're doing a great job. There's a new one just started called Hunted on Thursday Nights with Melissa George, and that, I've watched the first episode. Looks really good, and uh, definitely something to watch from the writers of Spooks as well. So definitely quality. Okay, so. Next set of questions are from Hygiene76, another top bloke. And uh, he has three questions for me. And the first question is he says, He's been subbed to me for around three years. And as we know, it takes ages for you to unbox parcels. Five minutes plus. <laughs> How will I recoup my one day the one my one day of life back from this? <laughs> I'm really sorry about that, mate, and I'm quite impressed that you would actually sit there and watch me unbox the whole package. I think anyone who actually sits and watch my pickup videos and package videos. That's weird, heard a noise. Freaky. And um, actually watches me unbox the whole thing. That's impressive, because I always assume that most people just skip forward and <laughs> get to the point where I pull the items out of the box. But I, 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 me personally, when I watch those videos, I like it because it builds the suspension, I find, when I'm watching it. Even though I know what's in the box, it still builds suspension, which is kind of weird. But yeah, I don't know. You're going to get that back, mate. Um, unless you can make a pact with God when you die, and he gives you extra time and sends you back to Earth. It could be. You never know. <laughs> um, question number two. Is there an end to buying, selling, buying, selling consoles? Probably not. I actually think it's an addiction. And not until I came on YouTube did I find out I wasn't the only person that does it, which is quite funny. To see all these people on YouTube doing exactly the same thing is quite hilarious because I was like, thank God I'm not just doing it on my own. I'm not mad. Um, hopefully it'll never happen again. Hopefully now I'll stick with the systems I have, but I can never say I will because you know what I'm like. You've been watching me for three years, so you know I'll just end up selling stuff and buying it back later on. <laughs> but I hope there's an end. <laughs> and question number three, what colours would you customise your consoles if you did? That's a good question. I don't generally do that, but um, I have in the past had customised consoles done for me. And the best one I had was my original Xbox, and I had it painted silver, and the jewel in the top had that, um, I think it's, is it a Dremel? I think that's what they use to take it out. He took the jewel out and he replaced it with a new one, and it was a clear jewel, and it had the Autobot symbol, and he put a red light underneath it, and a red power light as well. That looked badass. I absolutely love that. It's just such a great system. Uh, yeah, I was well chuffed with that. I had, um, I once, the guy who was doing it, he used to do them all the time, he used to do custom jobs, you could just ask him for anything. And uh, I got him to do a banana yellow PlayStation 2. That was an interesting one. Even he was like, what the hell do you want a yellow PlayStation 2 for? But I just thought, why not? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. Modern consoles, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know really what you can do. I mean, like, the Wii's good because you get it in multiple colours anyway. And uh, the Xbox, I think they had like grey ones, didn't they, for the Halo and that, but we'll be. I think a red Xbox 360 would look really nice, especially the new slimline version. That look, I'm just looking at it right now, and I think yeah, that would look really nice in a deep, like a deep burgundy red, like, you know, not a blood red, because I think it'd be a bit weird. Um, or like a two-tone green, but not like a bright green, like, um, like a metallic. That could be quite nice. PlayStation 3. I don't know, I mean, I used to have that white chunky one, which was beautiful, I love that. Um, I'm looking at my slim line and thinking what that could look like. Maybe purple, like a metallic purple. I'm not really a big fan of bright colours because they might look a bit crap. Yeah, metallic purple might look nice on the PlayStation 3. That's a good question, actually. I never really thought about it on that, so that's quite cool. Right, okay. So, next question is from Captain Commando NZ. And he says, uh, congrats, thank you very much. And what a lot of questions to wait through. Yeah, there's quite a few. <laughs> uh, his question is, with your passion for Super Nintendo, would you consider collecting Japanese snares instead of PAL? 
Uh, more exclusives, better artwork, etc. Thanks heaps. You make me proud to be in YouTube video games. Thank you, dude. Um, I actually collect NTSC anyway, American. So um, I have considered looking at PAL exclusives. Um, I just aren't the 50 hertz and borders. Yeah. Japanese was where I started. I used to collect Japanese Super Famicom when I first started doing video game collecting anyway. It was the first system I purchased. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And the artwork, phenomenal. Uh, the Super Famicom has got some of the best artwork on the games on any system. Yeah, and then I must admit, I do really regret how my Super Famicom collection it was a massive mistake because I had a mint collection, I had a um, mint box system all bagged up, it was immaculate. Got it for 80 quid and all, and it was such a bargain at the time, I couldn't believe it. Uh, I had a really nice selection of games, I had all the Final Fights, all the Street Fights, all the Mario games, all the Donkey Kong games, Turtles, Zelda, just everything you could think of. I had a really tasty collection coming on. And then due to financial issues, I had to sell this, the collection, unfortunately, at the time, which was really depressing. <laughs> and then when I got back into collecting again, I decided to just go and buy an American one instead because I wanted to play Zelda in English. Which, in the end, turned out to be not an issue anyway because I played Zelda and I couldn't get into it, so it didn't matter. So really, I could have just carried on with the Japanese. I could have got back into that. But at that point, I built up a substan substantial amount of American games, so I just continued down that path. And I'm glad I did because I really like my American collection. It's, it's nice. And it means I can also still buy Japanese games if I want to and dabble so I can have a bit of both worlds which is great and uh, yeah thank you for watching man I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying the channel and keep on watching enjoy it <laughs> right okay next question what are we on now oh we're not even on half an hour yet we're okay right okay next question is from Lucky Sixpence another top dude oh it's just a comment I thought it was a minute he's just congratulating me thank you mate and uh yeah, it's been a long journey, and it's quite amazing I'm still doing this after all these years. I'm, I mean, literally three years I've been doing this, I can't believe it. Um, yeah, it's pretty amazing, really. I've stuck with this for as long as I have. And it's only really because of all you guys. And that sounds cheesy, but it's true. If you guys didn't watch and comment, you know, there'd be no point in uh, making videos, so you definitely make it worthwhile. Next up, we have questions from the awesome EdT1138. Really top bloke. Um, as everybody will probably know Ed from these top three Tuesday videos, really great guy. And he's got three questions for me. Question number one, what television show that you loved as a child would you like to see brought back today? That is a good question mate. Um, they brought Night Rider back not long ago and they ruined it. <laughs> and I never understood how you could ruin Night Rider. That should have been an easy remake, I don't understand what happened there. Um, I think the A-Team would be really good. I just don't know how they would do it nowadays. I mean, it'd be odd, because obviously they were from Vietnam. They were Vietnam soldiers from what I can remember. So it would have to be like current war situations and I don't know if that would be a bit too close to the bone so they might not be able to do that, which would be a bit of a shame. Um, unless they were like Cold War soldiers, but then maybe that's going back a bit too much, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think one of the shows that I watched in the 80s that I were... Maybe Street Hawk, but then I don't know if that would work in Airwolf. I'm not sure if they would translate in the modern era if people would understand them and really get into them. I mean, Christ, I just bought Dallas back, which I can't get my head around that. I don't really see why they've done that, but yeah. Um, what else? I'm trying to think what other TV shows were big when I was a kid. There was Airwolf, there was, there was Airwolf, Street Hawk, there was. A team, as I say, obviously. I'm trying to think. Night Rider, of course. Ah, oh, the Fall Guy. That'd be a good one, actually. Yeah, that was. I love that. It was uh, Lee Majors? That was great. And there was also. Um, I can't remember. I can never remember if it was called The Last Ninja or not, or if that's. The, I'm just confusing it with the game. But it was a program with Lee Van Cleef, and he played a ninja. That was a quality show. And I'm pretty certain it isn't called Last Ninja. But in my head it always has been, because I'm pretty certain I wikipedia it a while ago and it wasn't called Last Ninja. But I can't remember what the hell it was called. But Wikipedia it because it was a quality show and it's best to be on YouTube as well. So yeah, I'd actually make that one again and redo it, that'd be quite cool. Question number two from Ed. What is something other than video games that you do in order to blow you off steam? Mostly watch films and TV shows. Um, you know, you're an American guy. You know how good your TV is over there. I assume you watch the TV shows, obviously. American TV is the best. You have so many great shows, and I watch absolutely tons. I mean, just 
an example at the moment, I'm watching Supernatural, Hawaii Five-0, Castle. Um, there's a new show called Revolution, which is brilliant, I'm loving that. And there's another show that just started called Last Resort, which is absolutely bloody brilliant. If none of you have seen Last Resort, there's only been two episodes so far, you have to watch it. It is just fantastic. The acting, the scripting, everything is absolutely bang on. Um, I'm also watching The Mentalist. I'm watching, um, trying to think what's on my machine at the moment. Um, there's a show called Strike Back, which is a British show, which is cheesy as hell, but really funny and good to watch. Um, Haven's another one, Warehouse 13, love that show to bits, brilliant show. Um, what else have we got? Sons of Anarchy, one of my favourite shows, absolutely love that show, it's just brilliant. And the last, the last season, this se current season, so good. Criminal Minds, another show I absolutely love. Homeland, I love Homeland to bits, that show is just brilliant. Very slow paced, but man, it then I've built suspense. And one of my favourites is Dexter. Uh, I love Dexter to bits, such a great show. Um, every single year that has been consistently brilliant, they've never failed in my opinion. They've never had one season where it's been a bit crap. It's always been quality and the acting's right up there. The, the scripting is superb uh, and Michael C. Hall is just absolutely superb. He, he plays Dexter so well. And if you, I don't know if you watched Dexter yourself, Ed, but I think it might have been two seasons back when John Lithgow was in it. Some of the best TV I've ever watched, absolutely stunning. So yeah, I watch a lot of shows, or a lot of other shows I watch as well. Um, yeah, and that, that was pretty much the big thing that I watch more. It used to be films, but American TV shows really have taken over, and I watch films now and again, but I still try and keep up. But yeah, the American TV shows are my favourite, without a doubt. I'd say if I lived in America, I'd never leave the house. I'd, I'd just be obsessed. <laughs> um, question number three. Final Fantasy on the NES was the first game I sat down and played straight through on the first attempt. What was yours? <laughs> I have no idea. Honestly mate, to be quite honest, I find it difficult to remember as a kid if I ever completed games or not. Because when it was like the Commodore 64 and the Amiga 500, me and my friends had a lot of games. I mean, we're talking shitloads. I had like, the, the Commodore 64, I remember, I had a free tier set, um, chest of drawers. And, being the Commodore 64 games were on cassette, you could get them like back to back two rows, from what I can remember. I was very young, so it's a long time ago. And all three drawers were full of games. Um, I'm sure everyone knows the reason why that, I had so many games. <laughs> like most people. And the same with the Amiga. You used to share your games around your friends, so we had a lot of games. We had lots of boxes and boxes and boxes of games. And so that's probably why I never really completed games as much. It was more, it was like play a game for a few hours, play another game, play another game, play another game, you're constantly switching back and forth. There were, the odd game that sticks out in my mind was Monkey Island, I remember completing those games, and I'm pretty certain we completed the last Ninja games as well, which were bloody hard, but I'm pretty certain I remember completing those. But going right back to the 80s, like the Commodore 64 days, honestly I don't think I ever did complete a game, not that I can remember anyway, there's nothing that stands out in my mind, I just remember playing a lot of games. Uh, <laughs> it's a shame really that we never had the NES, because that was a bold hard machine and it really would have tested you as a gamer. Um, yeah, I thought it was finally interesting actually the 80s, how different it was for us in the UK and the guys in America and Canada, the, the gaming experiences, the fact that you guys were so NES you know, focused and it, where I came from at least, the NES was nothing, no one knew about it and it wasn't until the, um, the early 90s, right at the beginning, when one of my friends got rid of his Spectrum and got an NES for some reason, I don't even know why he got it because no one, none of us knew what an NES was. Um, I just remember going around and playing Mario and being so impressed with it at the time. Um, you know, that was the time when the Mega Drive was out, and you know, I, yeah, it's weird that it's, you know, it's it's a total contrast because you know it was all computers where I came from. All right, okay, guys. So I think we'll call it a day there for part two, and. I'll be back shortly with part three and we'll crack on with some more questions. So thank you for watching and as always I'll see you again in the next part in part three.